So we are in UBC's Malcolm Knapp Research Forest. This is a typical coastal needly forest with the three species, Western Red Cedar, Douglas Fir, and Western Hemlock, which would have been cut over through much of this forest, but allowed to regrow. Uh, this stand is probably about 60, 70 years old. We also have a couple of broadleaf species, including this uh, big leaf maple right above me, uh, and an understory of sword fern, red huckleberry, salau, and other uh, native understory herbs and shrubs. So you'd expect then that this would be a podzol, given the sort of temperate, rainy West Coast marine climate and the coniferous vegetation that will create a, a rather acidic uh, uh, A horizon uh, with very slow to decompose uh, leaf litter. But what's interesting about this site is the parent materials. Now they're glacial like much of BC, and as ice, that big ice sheet receded 10,000 years ago, uh, glacial till was laid down across much of our province. But here you can see that it occurs in what can be a typical sequence. The first, by the way, is this layer of what we call basal or lodgment till. It's extremely hard, that is not rock, and it extends from about here in the soil to down, let's just have a quick look at it, all the way to about here, and it overlies what might be glacial marine sediments on top of bedrock. So lodgment till then is material that is very compacted, it's carried just underneath, end glacial or subglacially, this massive ice sheet, which compacts and uh, presses it down under pressure. So it's actually quite impermeable, and you can see how difficult it is to work. So plants don't tend to extend their roots down through this lodgment till. But on top of the lodgment till, typically, you'll find that the glacier lays down something called ablation till, which, like till and like the lodgment till, is a mix of large and, and small fragments of mixed lithology gathered from all, of, all across the glacier's uh, accumulation and ablation zone, um, but it tends to be much less tightly packed. It is material that is carried typically on or just under the surface of the glacier, and as the ice melts, it lays that stuff down on top of this subglacial lodgment hill. So that's what we have now. One thing to note about this site is there's a little bit of a story here, and that is that it's believed that there was a massive glacier dammed lake just to the east of here at some point as all of the ice was melting. And when the ice dam uh, failed, all of that water rushed across the landscape and washed out some of the ablation till here. It removed a lot of the fine clays and silts uh, and left behind some of the coarser fragments, uh, but also probably deposited some coarse sand uh, as, as the water slowed down, some of the material that was suspended in it. And so that's really what we're seeing here, um, is this ablation till that's been resorted and re sort of created uh, by that, those flood waters. It's fairly coarse sand, and I can feel those sand grains between my fingers, along with gravel and even some much coarser uh, materials like stones, which I don't know if the camera man can show you, but uh, there's a nice piece of uh, granite or basalt uh, that, that was sitting uh, on the top of this soil when the ablation uh, till was deposited. Let's look at the soil itself. So I'm going to just try to get a little scoop of the top soil, or close to the top soil, which has been a little bit eroded. And it tends to be very dark in color and sort of granular or crumb in structure, probably medium to coarse uh, granular, full of organic material that comes from the surface and the roots just below it that doesn't, hasn't decomposed very effectively. So we have that sort of dark layer on the top, which is part of our AH potentially horizon or our organic horizon just above it. As we move down through the soil, what we find, if I can clean this off, is that it becomes a little bit lighter and even a bit red. And that's very typical for a podsol. As you know, um, the materials uh, from the top of the soil tend to get translocated or moved down in a process called eluviation. 
and deposit it in the bee. And we can see here we're probably in a bee horizon and it's quite red material, that sandy material. So iron oxide's probably coating the mineral grains that have been alluviated and deposited in this, what could, could be an alluvial bee horizon. Just to take a look at the effect of having our lodgment till here, our impermeable lodgment till, probably at the end of the rainy season in the spring, there is quite a bit of water that's percolated down through the A and B horizons here that gets stuck on the top of the sea. So you might even have a perched water table. And some of that stuff will find cracks through the lodgment till and eventually seep out uh, below it. Uh, but again, we might actually find some evidence of water logging at the bottom of this soil um, periodically at the end of the growing season. And that's, that's our soil.